Before skedaddling out of Albany at the end of the legislative session, the state legislature approved more than 10 bills allowing municipalities in New York to impose various hotel and motel taxes, which is seen by its supporters as a way to bring in new revenue from non-citizens of a town or city. To discuss this issue, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Mark Dorr, president of the New York State Hospitality and Tourism Association. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thank you for having me, David. So right now, on the current landscape, how common in New York are occupancy taxes on hotels and motels, either at the county or town and city levels? Yes, currently there are only two counties in the state that do not collect an occupancy tax. So every county has been doing it for decades. And in each county, the use of those occupancy taxes vary from 95% of it going to marketing and promoting tourism to some of it going there, some of it going to convention centers, some of it going to arenas, and some of it going sort of into the general fund for potholes, roads, and bridges. So every county is different, but all but two have one at the county level. And what about for cities and towns? I know some have them, but are they as widely administered as the county taxes? Great question. We'll, and we'll exclude Westchester County from this because they have had a local municipality occupancy taxes for many, many, many years. But other than that county, for decades, there have not been municipal occupancy taxes that have been stacked on top of the county. However, last year in the Syracuse area, you have DeWitt, Weedsport, they instituted a local municipal occupancy tax. And that then got the ball rolling for every other sort of municipality around to say, oh, wait a minute, there's extra money that they're getting from the hotel industry. So let's try to do that locally. And as you started out by saying, there are 10 new ones this legislative session that just ended. So there's some momentum to those local occupancy taxes. And while some of the local governments say, hey, look at this, we can tax... Uh, people from out of town, while they're here, the first six months, eight months or a year, they may see some residual positive effect from that. But the problem that is short-sighted on these local municipal taxes is long-term, they're very detrimental to the tourism industry. Are there some municipalities, for example, I think of New York City or my own hometown of Saratoga Springs, where these types of fees or taxes can be imposed and there isn't a major impact on tourism because those destinations are in such demand? Where this really triggers a problem with the municipal occupancy taxes is on group business, convention business, businesses that hold events in different areas of the state. Generally, the public doesn't look at that bill and say, oh, well, I stayed here, the overnight was $200, and then I had you know, 22% tax on that room over the two nights. Uh, but what it does hamper, and Saratoga is a good example because they do a lot of convention business there. The groups that are bringing you know, a couple of hundred room nights, being at a convention center, when you look at those overnight rooms at that level, the companies, the associations, they look at the full bill on the hotel. And oftentimes they say, okay, well, you know, it's going to cost me X to go to this city or town. And if their occupancy tax, say, is, you know, overall between the county and the local, it gets up over 10%. They look at that and say, okay, well, that I could save several thousands of dollars for my business by just going across to a different county and having my meeting. So really what the problem becomes in is if there's group business, if there's convention business, if there's traveling sports teams, you know, if you're having a big sporting event coming to your municipality and you they look at that overall bill for all those teams coming in, they'll go somewhere else. And that's really what we're trying to explain to the local folks and the state legislators that Yes, the first year you might not realize it because the contracts have already been set. It's year two, year three, year four. When they start going somewhere else, uh, that becomes the problem. And it it's exacerbated by this, David. When conventions come in, sports teams come in, 
study after study, both in New York State and, and worldwide and nationally, everybody recognizes that for every dollar spent by a tourism person coming in either to, to stay in a hotel room, there's eight or nine additional dollars spent in the community, whether it's restaurants, whether it's shops, whether it's movie theaters. So if your taxes become so high that the groups don't come, that in the subsequent years is what really hurts the local economy. And is the concern then that these conventions or large events will go to neighboring states? Because I have to imagine if you're taking a statewide perspective of this, you don't really care what town a convention is held in as long as it's held in New York. So is the fear that people will seek alternatives to New York State? Yes, I'll give you a perfect example of this. Buffalo did not get anything through the legislature, but it was a hot topic the last four or five days of the session. So Buffalo, for example, they take in some some rather large conventions. They compete with Columbus, those types of places, and down in you know in Pennsylvania also. So people that take a certain size convention will move to another place outside of New York state. And when you come out to the Saratoga area, the Albany area, you know, you've got Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, kind of right over the border there. And they'll go to like-sized cities around those areas. So we're bordered by states that don't quite have the occupancy taxes that many are being proposed here. So the fear is that they'll, they won't do business in the state of New York. So looking at the list of bills that authorize hotel and motel taxes for municipalities as part of this year's legislative session, two that pop out to me uh, that might actually be impacting their convention and large event business are Syracuse and Binghamton. But there are also some smaller towns here. So do you think this is something that smaller towns and cities can adopt if they already aren't? bringing in those large-scale events and they're really just targeting those families that might be staying a night or two in their municipality? To go to the the Syracuse one, that was a big increase there. And they were already one of the top couple as far as as occupancy taxes in the county. And, you know, they they also, one of the things that was missed on that by the either local and the state is legislators is they, a couple of their big hotels, one being the Crown Plaza out there and one being the Sheridan, which went from a hotel to, to housing for Syracuse students, you know, their, their convention business opportunities were already kind of dwindling because of all the, the bigger hotels that have moved on to different areas. So that Syracuse one, really, I think, is going to cause problems for that market on the convention business side, uh, because, again, they compete with people that are outside of of the state as well. The local, uh, to answer the local question, they're not as worrisome as the people who do convention and sports business. But even the one I know that Auburn was was one that was really entertaining an occupancy tax during the, the year that's out by Syracuse. You know, they have one a Hilton Garden Inn out there that does a fair bit of group business. That's really what they do. Small meetings and they do a lot of sports business. So that that's a concern for them. In these smaller municipalities, if you even have small groups or sports business, they're going to drive five minutes into the next county and stay there. Now, to your point, David, they're all staying in New York State. But for our members who are hotels to have something that's raising the occupancy tax so it's not level from county to county, some of these hotels are going to struggle to continue to stay afloat because, again, it could be a five-minute drive where a small group says, hey, we're going to take our 25 rooms right over there. Well, 25 rooms that may repeat a couple of times a year, that that's a big loss for a local community. And I will say, David, in a lot of these, the language that we look at in these occupancy tax bills, very rarely... Does any of that money, the, the occupancy taxes a lot throughout the state go back to marketing and promoting that area to bring more people in? These local municipalities that have passed these in the last couple of years, it's just going to fill budget gaps, you know, fill potholes, you know, plant, plant some flowers maybe as people are driving in. So it's not even going back into marketing and promoting to try to draw more people in. It's kind of 
a pet project type of occupancy taxes as you can look at it at the on the big picture side. Well, sticking with the issue of tourism and hospitality in New York, the legislature also approved a bill designed to create a registry of short-term rentals in New York, thinks Airbnb or VRBO properties. And as part of that, it could become easier for counties that aren't already doing this to track and tax these properties. What do you think of this measure, which was a heavy lift, and I think a lot of people didn't expect to actually get done this legislative session, but passed uh, in the waning days uh, here in Albany? Yeah, this was a, a huge issue and one that our association had worked on geez, the last seven or eight years, and we had a great partner on this with the Association of Counties. It was right down to the wire. It was early in the morning on Friday, but we did get that done. It's the first one in the country that would be statewide. And it it one it does two things. It creates the registry, and there's two parts to it. It's gonna people are gonna register with the state. And there are also some companies that we work with that aggregate short-term rental data. So if somebody doesn't voluntarily go on there and register, we do have some idea of who's operating so we can go. And, and get the information out to them and say, hey, you need to register. But the registration is going to be great, not only for the state, but they're going to share that with the municipalities. Because so many times in my position as the president of the Tourism Association, not only do we get calls on what we're doing for the lodging industry, but I probably get 20 calls a week from residents from all over the state saying, hey, my neighborhood is not what it once was. I've got parties next door. This is going to help be able to understand what the short-term rental industry is doing in New York State. It's a $1 billion industry that has been unregulated for the past, you know, decade at least. And Senator Hinchy, Assemblymember Fahey, really were our champions on this as well as, and I wanted to say, at the end of the day, the voting on this was very bipartisan. A lot of Republicans jumped on and said, you know, this is a problem in my community. This is a way to solve that problem. So there's a registration uh, the, there's going to be a collection of sales and occupancy taxes, which is going to flow the way the hotels do. And there's very basic safety and security. But you think about the tax revenue that will be generated for the municipalities as well as the state and just having a handle on what the industry is doing uh, makes this bill a great one. And it levels the playing field for our hotel industry, most of all. Our uh, stance has never been these short-term rentals should be illegal because they're necessary in the state of New York. It's just leveling the playing field so that communities know who's doing it. The taxes are being collected because we had hotel members competing, especially in our small bed and breakfast, competing with unregulated quote unquote businesses that uh, really was unfair. So that gets to the bottom of that issue um, for our members and, and for the state as a whole. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this conversation. We've been speaking with Mark Dorr. He is the president of the New York State Hospitality and Tourism Association. Mark, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. David, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. Visit unionstrongny.org for more information. Join us again for Capitol Press Room, a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.